What if I told you that coding could be as simple as writing a sentence in English? Sounds crazy, right? But it's becoming a reality thanks to the incredible advancements in artificial intelligence. And today, we're diving deep into one of the hottest new tools shaking up the coding world, Cursor AI. Cursor AI is an AI-powered coding assistant built upon Visual Studio Code that leverages powerful large language models to help you write code faster, smarter, and with fewer errors. Forget spending hours debugging syntax issues or racking your brain to remember that specific function. Cursor AI acts like a super-powered coding buddy, ready to assist with everything from code completion to generating entire functions based on your natural language instructions. So, what makes Cursor AI so special? Well, it's not just another code completion tool. Cursor AI offers a deeper understanding of your project's context, going beyond simple suggestions to provide truly relevant and insightful recommendations. Its code-based chat feature lets you have a conversation with your code, asking questions, receiving explanations, and even identifying potential issues in a way that feels incredibly intuitive. It's like having a seasoned developer looking over your shoulder and offering expert advice in real time. But it doesn't stop there. Cursor AI is a powerhouse for refactoring code, especially when dealing with large, complex projects. It can help you clean up your code, identify areas for improvement, and maintain a consistent coding style across your entire team. This not only makes your code more readable and efficient, but also minimizes the risk of introducing new bugs. And for those who like to build things fast, Cursor AI is your secret weapon for rapid prototyping. Describe what you want to build in simple terms, and it can generate the necessary code snippets to bring your ideas to life quickly. Now, you might be thinking, doesn't GitHub Copilot do something similar? While GitHub Copilot is an excellent tool integrated with an existing IDE, Cursor AI takes things further with its standalone approach, deeper contextual understanding, and interactive features. Replit, on the other hand, focuses on collaborative coding in a browser-based environment. Cursor AI truly shines when it comes to boosting individual developer productivity. But enough talk, let's see it in action. Check out this iOS app built by Pratik Keshri in just a few hours using Cursor AI and Claude 3.5. Or how about this perplexity clone built in under 8 minutes by McKay Wrigley, leveraging the power of Cursor AI and OpenAI hopefully uh, be getting a lot of code writing in this page so it looks like we got some good stuff so let's see uh, what it came up with for us so let's go ahead and hit search and see what we get here okay cool so we got all the sources so you can see we kind of replicated that same thing like perplexity does and then uh, right now the the answer is generating and then we have the ai generated summary here okay so we got every single thing we uh, wanted uh, we did that we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and say we finished that in seven minutes and six seconds these examples showcase the incredible potential of Cursor AI to revolutionize how we code. But before we dive into building our own chatbot application, I want to mention that I have a simple tutorial that walks you through setting up Cursor AI with a variety of powerful language models. We'll explore both paid options like Sonnet 3.5 and ChatGPT-01 Preview, as well as free-to-use alternatives like Gemini and Grok. So, stick around and get ready to witness the future of coding firsthand. In the next part of this video, we'll be building a chatbot application from scratch using Cursor AI. You won't believe how fast and easy it can be. If you haven't already, smash that subscribe button and ring the bell so you don't miss out on more awesome AI content. Also, if you'd like to support the channel, consider subbing to my Patreon. There you'll find exclusive custom workflows, easy to use comfy UI one-click installers, and most notably, access to my newly created custom Flux Loris Discord bot. Simply provide your prompt, select the Loris you want to apply, use an enhanced prompt from our LLM prompt enhancer, and let it generate. We'll be adding more bots and Loris in the near future, so stay tuned. All right, let's get our hands dirty and start setting up Cursor AI. First things first, head over to the Cursor AI website and click the big, shiny download button on the main page. Once the download is complete, Open your downloads folder and locate the installation file. Double click it and follow the on-screen instructions to install Cursor AI. Cursor AI should launch automatically after installation. You'll be greeted with a brief intro, 
and some settings to configure how you want to run it. Since we'll be using it with VS Code, you can simply click Continue. The default settings should be perfect for our needs. Next, you'll be asked about data sharing preferences. Choose whether you'd like to share data or keep things private. Now sign up for an account if you don't already have one. You get a free two-week trial of their pro membership plan with no credit card needed at sign up. Once you have your account set up, you log in to the app. And there you have it. You should now be looking at the VS Code interface with Cursor AI integrated. Now, before we start coding, let's create a new folder for our project. This folder will house all the files and dependencies we'll be using. Click on the File button in the upper left corner and select Open Folder. Navigate to the location where you want to store your project and create a new folder with a descriptive name. Then, select the folder to open it within the VS Code interface. With our project folder ready, let's create a Python environment. But first, make sure you have Python 3.11 installed on your device. And to create JavaScript applications like the one we will be creating today, make sure you have Node.js 18 installed as well. Now to create our Python environment, click on the View option in the top menu and select Command Palette. In the drop-down menu, choose Python, Create Environment. Select Vinv to create a virtual environment within our workspace. Then, choose Python 3.11 or whichever version you have installed. The environment creation process will take about 30 seconds. You'll see a .vinv folder appear within your project folder in the left pane, indicating that the environment is ready. Now, let's open the terminal by clicking on Terminal in the top menu bar and selecting New Terminal. You'll know your Python environment is activated when you see vinv next to your directory path in the terminal. Press Ctrl plus L to open the cursor AI chat menu. This is where the magic happens. We'll be interacting with our LLM copilot here. When you create your first Cursor AI account, you get a two-week free trial of their pro plan. This gives you access to their premium models, including Sonnet 3.5 and GPT-40, with up to 500 fast requests. After the trial, you'll be switched to Cursor Small or OpenAI's GPT-40 Mini until you upgrade. But if you'd rather use your own API keys with other models and providers, you can easily configure those in the model settings. Click on the settings gear in the top right corner and navigate to the models page. You'll see a list of pre-added models. If the model you want isn't there, simply head over to the API documentation on the provider's website, find the exact model name, copy it, and paste it into the add model field. Keep in mind that some cursor features might not work if you use your own API keys. You can then add your OpenAI, Anthropic, Gemini, or Azure API keys in the designated fields at the bottom of the models page. Click Verify to ensure everything is working correctly. Don't forget to enable both the model and the provider before leaving the settings page by clicking the toggle switches. If you want to add a Grok model, navigate to the OpenAI API section, click Override OpenAI Base URL, and enter the Grok Base URL along with your API key in the provided fields. Now, Let's head back to the chat box. You can choose which LLM you want to use for your session by clicking the little down arrow on the bottom left of the message box and selecting your preferred model. I'll be using Sonnet 3.5 for this project because I've had great results with it in the past. All right, with everything set up, we're finally ready to start coding. Let's build something awesome. All right, now comes the exciting part, building our chatbot application. I have a pre-made prompt that describes the kind of chatbot I want to build. Here's what it says. Essentially, I want to build a Node.js chatbot that can handle text prompts, allows users to upload PDFs and text documents, integrates with the Gemini API for its long context capabilities, and has a sleek, modern design. To make things even easier for our AI copilot, I'm going to create a file with the Gemini API instructions. This way, Cursor AI will have a clear understanding of how to configure Gemini for communication through its API. I copied the build and interactive chat section directly from the Gemini documentation and pasted it into this text file. Now, I'll pass both the prompt and the API instructions file to Sonnet 3.5. To do this, make sure both files are located inside your project folder. Then, 
Click the little plus icon in the top left corner of the message box and ensure that the files you want the model to see have a green indicator next to them. When the model provides a response, it will be able to use both of these files as context. Let's hit enter and let the AI work its magic. In a matter of seconds, it's generated all the code and instructions we need to build our app. We can now follow the instructions step by step. First, it instructs us to create a package.json file, which will contain the names of the dependencies our project needs. To create a file, simply click the new file icon in the left menu near your project folder name, type in the file name, and click off. Once you've created the file, instead of copying and pasting the generated code, you can click apply and then continue to have the model automatically insert the code into the file. When it's done generating, click accept if you're happy with the changes and save the file. Repeat this process for the rest of the instructions provided by the bot. Make sure you're placing all the files in the correct directories as the code will expect them to be there. To create new folders, Click the new folder icon in the left menu next to the project folder name and enter the folder name as instructed. Now, I'll run npm install in the terminal to install all the project dependencies. Next, I'll create the .env file and grab my Gemini API key. You can get yours by heading over to Google AI Studio, clicking create new key, adding a project, and copying the key. Paste the API key into the newly created .env file. Now, for the moment of truth, let's run npm start to start the server. So far, this is a good start. The server seems to have started without any errors and is running on local port 3000. Let's head over to the browser and see what we've got. You can access the local web page by typing 127.0.0.1.3000 into the URL bar. And there it is, our Gemini chatbot, complete with a pretty decent looking UI. It even has the attach files button in the bottom left corner, just like we asked. Let's send a message and see if we get a response. Pretty neat. We built a fully functional chatbot in less than 10 minutes. I tried to upload a PDF file containing information on the new OpenAI 01 Strawberry model. Hmm, it seems like the file didn't upload. Let's head back to the model and see if it can help us fix this issue. So I told the model that the app starts up great but the attach button doesn't work. Sonnet has suggested some solutions and provided new code changes. Applying these fixes is as easy as clicking apply. You'll see the new code it's adding in green and the code it's removing in red. Click Accept to finalize the changes. Unfortunately, the Attach Files button is still giving us some trouble. But that's okay. We can continue iterating with the model, describing the issue, and applying the suggested fixes until it's working perfectly. After a few more tries, we finally got the button working. Now we can upload documents and have a more interactive conversation with the chatbot. And there you have it. We've built a fully functional chatbot application using Cursor AI in just a few minutes. This is just a glimpse of what's possible with this powerful tool. Cursor AI can significantly accelerate your development workflow, help you learn new concepts faster, and tackle complex coding challenges with ease. Whether you're a seasoned developer or just starting your coding journey, I highly encourage you to give Cursor AI a try. It has the potential to revolutionize the way we code, making the process more efficient, enjoyable, and accessible to everyone. I hope this demo has inspired you to start building with AI. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this video with your fellow coders.